How's it going? So in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between the conductile cardiomyocytes and the contractile cardiomyocytes. Uh, so a couple important things to remember right off the bat is that the conductile cardiomyocytes are going to be responsible for generating an electrical signal. And so this electrical signal is going to be shown through action potentials. And so one important conductile cell to remember, our first one is going to be our SA node. And our SA node is going to be located in our right atrium. And the SA node is going to be what generates our action potential. And I'm going to preview that AP. Um, another conductile cell to remember is our AV node. And so our AV node is going to be located between the atrium and the ventricle, and it's just going to be a cluster of conductile cells. And so our SA node is going to create its action potential. It's going to go through the AV node um, to our next type of conductile cells, which are going to be the bundle of his. Um, and these are going to break off into the left bundle branches and the right bundle branches. Um, and those branches are then going to break off into the Purkinje fibers. And the important thing to remember about the Purkinje fibers is they're going to be the ones that are connecting the conductile and our contractile cardiomyocytes. And so if you think about our conductile cardiomyocytes, basically we start off with our SA node here. Um, you know, we go down to our AV node. Um, it's going to break off into the bundle of his, which is going to break off into the left bundle branches, right bundle branches, and these are just going to be getting more and more branched, and they're soon going to turn into the Purkinje fibers. And the Purkinje fibers are going to be the most branched of them all, and they're going to be connected to our contractile cardiomyocytes. And so our contractile cardiomyocytes are going to be responsible for generating a contraction. And so these contractile cardiomyocytes are going to be the ones that are actually squeezing our ventricles and our atrium and, and forcing that blood out. And so we have two types of contractile um, of contraction. We have our atrial contraction, which is going to contract our atrium. And we have our ventricular contraction, which is going to contract our ventricles. And so yeah, now we're going to dive into, you know, what that looks like on a deeper level. All right, so here we have our conductile cardiomyocyte right here. Um, and over here we have a graph, and this is going to be voltage on the y-axis, uh, voltage, and on the x-axis we're going to have time. And so three important uh, channels that we want to remember for our conductile cardiomyocytes is our first one is going to be our HCN channel. So let's say this is an HCN channel. And what an HCN channel is important for is it's going to respond to two things. One, it's going to respond to hyperpolarization. So the greater the rate of hyperpolarization, uh, the higher our slope is going to be, and I'm going to show you that in a sec. Um, the other thing that affects it is the amount of cyclic AMP that's going to be bound to these HCN channels. And so if we were to draw an HCN channel up close, let's just say it looks like this, and it has four binding sites. So four binding sites um, in which cyclic AMP can bind to. So let's say cyclic AMP binds here. Um, that's not really going to have a high probability. Um, so our slope might look like that. Well, let's say we have two more bound, cyclic AMP. That's going to change the slope of this um, to a lot steeper. That wasn't a big change. Uh, maybe like that. And so if you think of an action potential, we start at negative 60 millivolts. Um, once we get to around 30 to 40, um, we're going to be able to depolarize our cell. And so the higher the slope of this graph, of this line right here, the faster we're going to be able to depolarize our cell. And so the more cyclic AMP that binds to these binding sites on the HCN channel, the higher the probability of generating an action potential. 
And so this HCN channel uh, is going to allow for the influx of Na+. And so that's going to be right here. And so let's say we get to negative 30 to 40 millivolts. Um, and so now we're able to generate our action potential. We've got enough Na plus in our cell. Um, and so our next important channel is going to be our DHP channel. And our DHP channel is just going to be a voltage gated calcium channel. And so what that's going to do is it's going to allow for calcium to flow into our cell. And so by bringing in this positive charge here, we're going to kind of get a graph that looks like that. And so here's going to be our HCN channel. And this part right here, this, in, this is going to be known as our CA2 plus influx. And so that's going to be our DHP channel opening and allowing for calcium to come into the cell. Okay, so now what is this uh, decrease here in our voltage? Well, we have one more important channel, and that's going to be our K plus channel. And so I'll just draw that right here. And so this is going to be our V gated, our voltage gated uh, potassium channel. And what that's going to allow is when it's activated, it's going to allow for calcium or for potassium to leave our cell. And so if we're taking plus charge out of our cell, that's going to lower our voltage. And so that's going to be responsible right here. And so this is going to be known as our K plus E flux. E flux out. Um, and so basically, um, our graph will keep repeating itself. Um, so here again, we'll have our HCN channel. And so this is for conductile cardiomyocytes. The three important uh, channels to remember are our HCN channels, our voltage-gated calcium channels, also known as our DHP uh, receptors, and our voltage-gated K plus channels responsible for our repolarization of the cell. All right, so now we're here at the interface between the conductile and the contractile cardiomyocytes. And so if you remember, uh, the Purkinje fibers are going to be the conductile cardiomyocytes that allow for the electrical continuity between the conductile and contractile cardiomyocytes. And so we're going to have a, different, a couple different junctions here. Um, the, one of the most important ones, though, is going to be our gap junctions. Um, and so these gap junctions here are going to allow for electrical continuity between these two different heart cells. And so the action potential is going to be able to flow through these gap junctions here. Gap junctions. Um, another important type of junction that we're going to have is anchoring junctions. And so that's just going to be our desmosomes here. And so these desmosomes um, are going to connect these two cells together so that they stay connected. Um, and so our contractile cardiomyocytes are going to be a little more representative of your typical uh, muscle cell. They're going to have actin and myosin filaments. So um, they're going to have these, they're going to have their T tubules um, like such. And we'll all get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, so this is the interface between the conductile and contractile cardiomyocytes. All right, so now we're going to be talking about our contractile cardiomyocytes. These are going to be the ones that are responsible for contracting our myocardium um, and squeezing that blood out into the aorta. Um, and so here we're going to have a graph um, of what's that looking like. We're going to have our voltage on our y-axis, um, millivolts, and on our x-axis here we're going to have time. Um, Okay, so what's happening? So we get our plus charge from our conductile cardiomyocytes. Um, so that plus charge is going to allow for these Na plus voltage gated channels. Um, and these voltage gated channels are going to be located here on the membrane. And so that's going to allow for the influx of sodium. And so the sodium is going to generate a depolarization of this contractile cell. And so if we look at that here, um, we're at negative 60. Once this Na plus voltage gated channel opens, um, we're going to have this huge influx, Na plus influx, um, of sodium into the cell. And then it's going to kind of taper off like this. Um, and so you might be wondering, what, what's occurring here? Well, here we have Na plus influx. 
Um, now here is where it gets pretty interesting. And so if we have this Na plus influx, this positive charge is traveling around here. Um, this here is known as the TT wheel. And so it's gonna travel down this TT wheel here and it's gonna hit this thing known as our DHP receptor. And so our DHP receptor is gonna be a voltage gated calcium channel. And what that's gonna do is allow calcium to come in from the extracellular space. So we're gonna have calcium out here. It's gonna allow for calcium to flow in here. However, here, this box that I've drawn, drawn is our sarcoplasmic, sarcoplasmic reticulum. And so what that's gonna have in there is just a bunch of calcium just stored up in here. So we're gonna have a bunch of calcium in here and when this calcium influx occurs, um, that's going to trigger another receptor here known as our riamidine receptor. And so this riamidine receptor is now going to allow for the efflux of calcium out here. And so it's, it's, it's known as calcium-induced calcium release, which is meaning we're bringing in calcium, and that calcium coming in is allowing for the release of calcium out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And as you know, this calcium here now can bind to troponin C. Um, the troponin C is gonna remove the tropomyosin, which is gonna expose the myosin binding sites, and that's gonna allow for muscle contraction. And so this part here is just gonna be known as um, our DHP receptor um, undergoing calcium-induced calcium release um, and then, of course, we're going to have our typical K plus efflux. Um, and that's going to be our last channel, which is uh, probably just going to be located here. We'll just draw it here. So this is going to be our K plus voltage gated. Um, and of course, that's going to allow for the efflux of K plus out of the cell. And that's going to allow for repolarization.